Hi, this is Bob Craig, and in June 2023, I'm observing, no, I'm celebrating my 60th year in radio broadcasting, and this is my mini-memoir of my love affair with it, and the journey I began as a child of the 50s in Boston, Massachusetts, and wound up in Philadelphia. Like so many households back then, the radio was always on. What fascinated me was how all this music could come out of such a small box-shaped object. After all, the 78 RPM records we had were about the size of the radio speaker. Yet there seemed to be an endless supply of music. Where and how was all this happening? Who was playing all this stuff? Hits of the early 1950s. Patty Page, Johnny Ray, Les Paul, Mary Ford. Somewhere there's music, paint the tune. Hey, Star, Joe Stafford. See the pyramids along the night. The tables are empty. Frank, the Basie Band, the early miles. I wanted to be part of this, no question. I spent my early teenage years visiting and hanging out at radio stations. You know, you could do things like that back then. I became friends with a DJ who invited me to spin his records at a station on Sunday mornings. I was ecstatic. Now I saw how the whole thing worked. After high school, I smoothly talked my way into a part-time job as a control board studio engineer at Boston's 50,000-watt powerhouse, WBZ. This was the summer of 1963, my first radio job, with pay. A few of the DJs there were patient enough to teach me a few announcing techniques, not the least of which was helping me diminish my Boston accent. The organ stylings of Mr. Jackie Davis taking us to 9 p.m. news time, after which we'll return with more recorded music. Oi, listen to that. Help! That was my first audition tape. Hey, there was lots to learn. And we're better than a small radio station in the White Mountains of Littleton, New Hampshire. After six months of bucolic quaintness, boarding house living, and barely affordable meals at the Mountain View Diner, hell, I was only making $50 a week. I was on to my next adventures with stops in central Massachusetts and eastern Connecticut. It was there in Norwich that I spent four years of sharpening my announcing and programming skills. But around 1970, I was ready for a bigger market, and it was time to move on. Hartford, here I come. WDRC in Hartford, where the fun is. WDRC was exactly that. Play the hits and have fun. It was like going to work at the National Lampoon. Does the super compatible Barry White from WTRC can't get enough of your love, babe? Where today? Try and get enough of this. Thought I'd recommend to my gluttons and gourmets a chicken liver and melted Hershey bar sandwich on Italian bread, along with a mixed glass of vinegar and butterscotch. Because it's oh lunchtime. WDRC. I was known as the guy on the radio that recommended weird lunchtime suggestions. Next stop in Hartford was a tighter and more formatted Top 40 station, WPOP. WPOP. Hartford. The music station. A little bit later this hour, we're going to have you call in, tell the last time was you got excited. The most exciting answer that I get is going to pop off a pop top. So get yourself re-whimpered all over again. It's about 7 after 1 o'clock in this Bob Craig show, Martha and the Vandellas. The song tells you what it's like when you are overpowered, overtaken by the majesties of love. Got you caught in. Quick stand, quick stand. This is 1975, when the station changed to all news. I landed a part-time DJ gig in Boston at WHDH, another station I grew up with that played what we called adult contemporary hits. 
cast your fate to the wind. I wouldn't mess around with the wind if I were you today because it's going to blow snow back at you sometime this afternoon. That's what's in the forecast. Dan Davis updates us on that from WHDH. And next hour, I hope to have a BU art student come by to explain why body painting with ragu spaghetti sauce avoids wrinkles on the thighs. Be tuned. Meanwhile, back in Hartford, I was formulating ideas for a special album soft rock format. Joni Mitchell, Carol King, Billy Joel, and so on. I finally convinced the owner of a low-rated, stringy, beautiful music station to let me put my ideas to work. So, on the first day of summer 1976, we put WWYC, the Natural 92, on the air. And boy, did it take off. We became a highly listened to, highly rated station within months, all over Connecticut and beyond. Three years later, I accepted an offer to program Philadelphia's WMGK, the station best known as Magic. The magic is the music. WMGK. Magic one. In April of 1979, I arrived and was given the keys to the kingdom. The music updated, the format realigned, and what happened was truly magic. We were number one with adults through the 1980s. When the 90s arrived, I shifted over to our sister station, WPEN, the Station of the Stars, a wonderful mix of music from the Great American Songbook, and I'm back on the air. On the uh, Station of the Stars, 950 WPEN this morning, Ella, 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 and you go to my head. It's nice to have a sense of place. Listen, I wish you a very happy uh, weekend. We're just about to begin that and a wonderful midday as we go through it together. My name is Bob Craig, and the radio station, of course, would be 950 WPEN, the Station of the Stars. Are you planning pizzas, maybe extra? You must ask for this offer when ordering. Oh, uh, hello there. I'm just uh, sitting around here doing my WPEN crossword puzzle. And I'm looking for a four-letter word in Spanish that means love. Amor. What's that again? Amor. Ah, thank you. My love. So love. And then a few years into the millennium, a change in format. And that's when I arrived at WRTI, where I happily have called home since 2005. As I look back on my 60 years in radio... I can truly say that I've lived my childhood dream. Oh, and let me add, I've never worked a day in my life.